Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ryan Furdock, a first year resident in the Case Western University Hospitals Orthopedic Surgery Residency Program. And I'm here to talk to you all about the modified Fells knee skeletal maturity system and using it to improve prediction of ultimate lower extremity length. Here are disclosures, none are relevant to this study. Very briefly, skeletal maturity is the degree of development of a child's bones. The basis for skeletal maturity evaluation is that particular ossification centers around the body develop at specific chronological ages in the average child. Most commonly, left-hand x-rays and the Grulichen Pyle Atlas are used to evaluate skeletal age. Skeletal maturity has implications in decision-making in many pediatric orthopedic conditions. Most importantly for this talk, it's useful in treating limb length discrepancy. Our research group at Rainbow Babies and Children's, along with our collaborators at Yale and the University of North Carolina, are working to modernize skeletal maturity evaluation by making skeletal maturity systems that meet the following criteria. We want them to be easy to learn, accurate, highly reliable, quick to implement, and based on radiographs that are commonly obtained for other reasons. One major success of our research efforts was the development of the modified Fells knee skeletal maturity system, which was published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery in January. It estimates skeletal maturity more accurately than the Gruel Pile Skeletal Age Atlas and uses knee x-rays to do it rather than a left-hand x-ray. Here are the seven parameters of the modified Fells knee system. In each parameter, you either measure the width of a structure, evaluate the shape of the end of the epiphysis, or evaluate physio closure. And while it's heartening to see our system perform better than the Gruel Compile uh, historical data set, it is critical to test our skeletal maturity systems on modern patients to solve clinical problems. We thus applied the modified Fells knee system to a modern pediatric population with limb length discrepancies. Our goal was to use the patient's age, sex, and femur length to predict what their ephemeral length would be on the healthy leg when they were fully grown. This was a retrospective study. We reviewed our institution's EMR to identify patients that met three criteria. First, they needed at least one hips to ankles radiograph prior to maturity. Next, they needed a second hips to ankles radiograph at maturity, which was defined by growth plate closure and assessed radiographically. Finally, they needed unilateral lower extremity disease. We were able to include 101 prior to maturity hips to ankles radiographs from 47 patients. To produce a skeletal age, we applied the modified Fells knee skeletal maturity system to each x-ray that was taken prior to maturity. The modified Fells requires evaluation of seven radiographic parameters, sex, and chronological age. Next, we used the skeletal age and current femoral length as inputs for a previously described limb length prediction system. We used the Paley multiplier method, the white Menelaus rule of thumb method, and the Anderson growth remaining method. The output of those systems is a prediction of ultimate femoral length. We compared these femoral length predictions to the predictions that would be made just by using a patient's chronological age rather than a skeletal age. To evaluate the accuracy of our predictions, we directly measured each patient's ultimate femoral length using their x-ray at maturity. We then calculated the difference between our prediction of the femoral length and the measured femoral length to determine prediction error. We did the same thing for the chronological age system predictions and repeated the process twice, once for tibial length and once for lower limb length. Because of the nature of our data where multiple pre-maturity radiographs were evaluated from each patient, we had to use linear mixed effects modeling to compare the accuracy of our skeletal age predictions versus the chronological age predictions. R squared values are presented here with higher R squared values indicating better predictions. In all cases, our skeletal age model outperformed the chronological age model. 
This was also the case for the other two limb length prediction systems. And although it's not the most appropriate way to look at this data, our femoral length predictions using skeletal age were on average two millimeters more accurate for femoral length, four millimeters more accurate for tibial length, and six millimeters more accurate for ultimate lower extremity length. So in conclusion, the modified FELS knee skeletal maturity system improves predictions of femoral length, tibial length, and lower extremity length. And it may have utility in estimation of ultimate limb length discrepancy and timing of epiphysiodesis. We are continuing to build off this work. One way we are doing this is improving the usability of the modified Fells knee system. A study our group just had accepted for publication in the Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics implemented computer adaptive testing principles to minimize the number of parameters that need to be measured on each patient while, maximizing, or while maintaining system accuracy. So instead of measuring all seven radiographic parameters on each patient, uh, which takes an experienced user about a minute and a half to do, you can just measure the two to three most important parameters uh, and get a skeletal age estimate of equivalent accuracy. We expect that this abbreviated modified Fells knee system would take approximately 30 seconds to implement. We're in the process of further testing our skeletal maturity systems to evaluate clinical problems. While the current study suggested this, we want to prove that our knee system allows for more accurate timing of epiphysiodesis. Using our recently developed hip skeletal maturity system, we are building a risk prediction model for contralateral slipped capital femoral epiphysis. And we're using a brand new risk skeletal maturity system to better stratify the need for operative intervention in adolescents with forearm fractures. And then finally, uh, going back to this last slide, we're conducting a study correlating skeletal maturity across multiple joints. We want to determine if patients' skeletal maturity is global or if it's joint specific. And this would have implications on what radiographs we use to evaluate particular clinical problems. To make skeletal maturity evaluation as easy as possible for clinicians, we have developed a free mobile application called What's the Skeletal Maturity? that's available on the uh, iOS and Android app stores. In its current version, the app walks users through application of the modified Fells knee system or the optimized Oxford hip system and outputs a skeletal age. By the end of the month, a new version of the app will be available that will allow for accurate skeletal age estimation on any major joints. And that new version will also incorporate the computer adaptive testing principles for the modified Fells knee system. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'll take any questions. We'd like to give you the award of $1,000 for winning the, Thank you so much. and this is your certificate acknowledging the receipt of the award and your membership in our organization throughout your training. Well, well thank you so much. I, mean, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and present. We appreciate your, your work. Thank you.